Um, this is Ryan Nunez, your host for Between the Chalk Lines podcast. I just wanted to tell you that we have a special episode today. Recap with Cash Shake, CEO and President of Baseball United. We talk a little bit about the showcase that he had in Dubai over the Thanksgiving weekend in 2023. So just a couple months ago, uh, how that went, how that happened, and uh, who, the, who was there. Um rules and some stuff that happened clarifying those um some updates on things that have come up between then and now um like the um retiring of Andrelton Simmons because they actually drafted him in their league back in October so talked about him and other things um just want to get this out of the way now the winner of the Brett Beatty 2023 Topps Chrome Rookie Card is Ocean Cards and Collectibles. You liked and followed on Twitter or X. Um, I'm going to call it X now. Um, so I will DM you on X and get your information. Uh, used random.org. If you were wondering, the list generator, and then I used uh, Google.com for a roll, uh, a D6 die, rolled it six times, um, got the number, and then generated it, the list of the people that who were um, available to, or I should say, eligible to win this card, and Ocean Cards and Collectibles was the one on top, so... You will get this card, uh, company or person, when I get to. Um, again, this is a special episode, and I will transfer that over to Cash and myself talking. So, I will see you next week. So, speaking of the showcase, you have been working to get this um, league underway and happening for two years plus. Uh, right. How was it to see this all come together and finally have baseball in Dubai with a crowd and with Hall of Fame players and future Hall of Fame players in, you know, um, your um, group? You had, you know, Nick Swisher, you had Albert Pujols, you had, um, I know, right. Barry Sant- um Barry Larkin. Yeah, Larkin, man, it was... Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it it was incredible, man. It was incredible to to be able to finally, you know, see something that we've been dreaming about for so long come into existence. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of hard work by a lot of great people trying to do something that never had been done before, and we were able to come together through a lot of challenges, man, a lot of adversity, but be able to put on the first ever professional baseball games in the history of the Middle East and South Asia. We had um, eight of our MLB legends with us on the field there, um, and then a couple more came towards the end, which was cool. Um, We had 50 great players representing the game of baseball from 25 different countries, Um, eight prospects from the region that were inspiring their countries back home in Pakistan and India and Sri Lanka and Uganda and Palestine and Bangladesh. I mean, it was pretty pretty inspiring man and um you know we did a lot of things really well we did some things that i think we can improve on and you know we learned a lot you know for just two games um we learned a ton and now we're taking all that learning and trying to grow as an organization mature as an organization and uh keep rolling man no definitely um i think it was a fantastic you know product we put on the field and i have to say Nick Swisher is your hype man. He is a great guy to have in the booth. He was loving it on um, calling all the plays and uh, especially when the, the home run was hit by Sandoval. Right. Moneyball, which I wanted to get into because you did tease a few rules that you said Major League Baseball would probably not go for right, right. that you would be putting into play. And we saw that in mm-hmm. the games uh, during the showcase, obviously, the money ball. 
Can you explain that to the listeners a little bit more, what the Moneyball is? Yeah, man, we wanted to be able to bring some new innovations to the game that, you know, um, no other league in the world has done or or probably would do. You know, with Major League Baseball as the oldest professional sports league in, in the world, almost 150 years old, you know, its history and its pageantry and its stats, all of that is a huge, huge reason why a lot of people love the game of MLB. It's also a reason why they can't do crazy things like create a six run home run like we did. Yeah. Um, but with us creating things from scratch, we have an opportunity with our league to do some new things to try to attract new fans to fall in love with baseball, attract younger fans, and just get people excited. So the money ball was my, um, it was kind of my little crazy um, idea that um, half the half of our team liked, half of our team didn't like. <laughs> Um, you know, because it's a little bit out there in some ways, but it's awesome because every team in our league and every game gets three money balls per game. Okay. And, and you can call the money ball um, when your team is up to bat. Right. And uh, and if the batter hits a home run with the money ball, it's double the runs. Yeah. So it's a really strategic use as our managers get used to it of like, you know, situational um play with the money bolt like for example you know there was a there was an instance when it was nine to two in the bottom of the ninth inning but because of the money ball when the you know one of our all-star teams got two guys on base it was like wait a minute this game could be closer with one swing of the bat yeah because if hits a home run three run run home run becomes a six run home run and on the flip side the game was tight it was a you know it was a 2-2 game at one point but then pablo hits a home run with the money ball with two guys on so that three run homer became a six run home run and you know it was cool because we got over 100 million views of that money ball swing on social media um you know everywhere around the world uh, there was news articles about it and you know fans are debating do i like it do i love it do i hate it but that's what we want man because we Definitely. want people to talk about the game you know and it's cool because now if you if you walk a batter or if you hit the hit the batter then the money ball stays in play okay if there's an out or any other hit then the money ball is out of play okay. um so it's cool you know i and i can't wait to see that concept you know continue to take off in our league yeah, definitely. It actually raised a question in my mind. Um, what if, say, Pablo hit a double or a triple in those two runs scored? Is it still just two runs, or is it four? Yeah, and it's just two runs. The okay. only double, only double the runs if it goes over the fence. If it's a home run. Okay, got it. Uh, thank you for clarifying that because that's been driving me nuts. I've been wanting to understand that rule uh, in yep. the entirety. Um, moving on, you have designated runners, is that correct? Yep, yep, we have designated runners that can okay. be used. Um, you know, this in the showcase, we said that they could be used every inning. We'll see what we do, at, you know, as the league grows. But, you know, one of we had two strategies with our designated runner one is to introduce more speed and stolen bases into the game, similar to how MLB's done it with the um limited times you can throw over on a pickoff attempt, as well as widening the bases, expanding the size of the bases. We wanted to um, provide some more excitement and and help encourage more speed on the base pass with these designated runners. The other thing we wanted to do was enable some of these prospects from our countries in the region to be a part of it. Because as you know, there's not a ton of guys yet that are ready to play at the professional level from India or Pakistan or Sri Lanka or Bangladesh, et cetera, around the region or the UAE. But there's a lot of fast guys out there who know how to, you know, run 90 feet, you know? And so we felt like the designated runner rule would enable us to introduce some of them to the game, start to build a fan base in their countries. And, you know, what's pretty cool is, you know, one of our, um, one of our prospects from Pakistan, Wahid ended up scoring, the first run in the history of baseball United wow. when he was the designated runner, which is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. cool. Um, last, last for the rules is no extra innings. 
it's decided by a home run derby. And That's I right. I saw you say it in the, the broadcast. Yeah, which I'm bummed we didn't we didn't get to show that in a showcase in only two games. But you know, there was a time where I thought yeah. we might we might end up going to the home run derby. So instead of going to extra innings when it's tied after nine, we do a home run derby where each team um selects two batters. Okay. And they each get 10 pitches. Just 10, 10 pitches, not uh, you know, 10 balls in play, but 10 pitches, and you rotate. So, you know, team A gets their guy gets 10 pitches, and then team B gets 10 pitches, and you go to the other guy, 10 and 10. After those 40 pitches are done, whoever has the most home runs wins the game. If it's still tied, then it's a sudden death swing off oh, wow. with one one guy going after another, which is pretty cool. Um so I can't wait till that one um, goes down, man, because it's almost like a penalty kicks in, in soccer, yeah, you know, yeah. or a shootout in hockey. You know, those are the things that get the most adrenaline pumping and most excitement. That's what we're pumped yeah. up about. Yeah, then, uh, we say we get free baseball here in the States, but in your league, you're literally going to have to sit in your seat and wait and see who gets the most home runs or if it goes to the second round, who gets the first home run for right. the team. Um, so thank you right. for clarifying those rules. Um, it was amazing to see that Tannefall, uh six one home run in person. Uh, I was watching yeah. on LB.TV. So uh, ah. that was amazing. Uh, well, you know, our, broad, our broadcast was a really cool part of what we were doing, Randy, because we were able to broadcast in 127 countries um, across six continents. And here in the U.S., we were on MLB TV, as you know, Fubo TV. We were, you know, on the front page of Roku and Amazon okay. over that week at Thanksgiving. And, you know, we were broadcasting in um, in India and Pakistan and all across Africa, the Caribbean France, the UK, um, Venezuela, you know, all these great baseball loving places and new places that are learning the game. So that was a huge part of what we wanted to prove and 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 show with our showcase games. Mm -hmm. Um so I was gonna go to next was uh sorry. Um so I know that I said already that Nick Swisher seemed to have you having a fantastic time in a booth, but he's already the honorary GM for the Falcons, if I'm not mistaken. Would he consider right. going to the booth later on? You know what? Nick did an amazing job. He did an incredible job, and he was, you know, so much energy, so much fun. So we'll see what happens, man. See what happens. Yeah, a ton of energy. You know, we'll see what happens in the future. We got a lot of options, a lot of great people, but we're really proud of Nick on on how he did um, calling the game, and really everyone that's part of our broadcast crew did such a such a phenomenal job. Uh, so a month before that, you had your inaugural um, draft for Baseball United. And with the eighth overall pick was Troy Sop and Dresden Simmons. He just announced his retirement from LB uh, back in December. Does that affect anything with him and Baseball United uh, by any chance? So far, no. Let's see. Let's see what happens. But right now we're planning on him playing for the Mumbai Cobra still, which will be cool, which will be awesome. You know, he's going to be – Playing in the Caribbean series in a couple of weeks down in Miami okay. for Curacao, um, and then um, so he still still loves the game. You know he's an amazing, amazing ambassador to the game. Um, Anderson is is somebody that I saw working with the prospects from Sri Lanka, from Pakistan, teaching them um, mechanics, you know, tips and tricks of the game from from a from a Gold Glover's perspective when they were taking infield practice yeah. and things that and you no know, i thought that was so cool to have someone that's won multiple gold gloves teaching mm -hmm. these prospects you know um fielding technique and and throwing technique and and so anderton's got so much to give still to the game and so much passion for it and he's a huge part of baseball united 
So I expect to see him out there on the field for us later this year. I do too. I think the move was more, he was just done with LV and had other focuses in his life, uh, like Baseball United. So yep. um, it, I'm glad to hear that he was a good ambassador for your young prospects that are coming up through the pipeline. And that was um, another thing that I was going to move into. You teased again um, the addition of another few teams in 2024. Uh, do you right. know when those will be released, the names and locations? Yeah. We know what they are. We don't, I haven't decided when we're releasing them just yet. But. <laughs> But I'm excited about it, man. I'm excited about it because there's so many great cities in that part of the world. Uh, a lot of places that, you know, most folks here in the States don't don't know a lot about yet. Um, but you're talking about some of the biggest, most exciting cities in the world. Um, some of the most innovative cities in the world in the Middle East and in India and in Pakistan. So um, we will be announcing some new franchises this year. But um, not sure exactly when just yet. All right, I know it's just the first couple of weeks of twenty twenty four, but um, you can never not ask. All right, um, right. Um, so I saw that you recently went to Japan, and you met with the ownership of the um, Yokohama Bay Stars uh, team. How was that? It was great. You know, the Bay Stars are an amazing organization. Um, wonderful history and heritage in that Yokohama Stadium. You know, it's been around for a long time. Got to get a tour of the stadium, got to meet their their head of baseball operations and their baseball team. Um, got a great friend, Watari, over there who's doing amazing work. So, you know, and Trevor Bauer played for them this yeah. past season. Um, so um, got to meet with them and also got to meet with the Yumiri Giants, you know, Tokyo Giants. So, um, you know, and they're a lot of people call them the Yankees of NPB, you know, wow. so two really world-class organizations. Um, both those, both those organizations were actually um, at our showcase. They had leadership oh. rep at our showcase. Yeah. So I really appreciated them coming to see us and what we were building. And I wanted to return the favor and meet with them, catch them before spring training. And, um, you know, we got a great relationship with a lot of teams and franchises, executives in Japan, and Japan is, you know, one of those places in the world where baseball is religion. And, um, yeah, you know, definitely. we're looking forward to, we we're looking forward to continuing partnering with several Japanese uh, NPB clubs. So there's a possibility of you, or I should say Baseball United and NPB uh, partnering up in some form in the future? Definitely. On the baseball ops side, you know, on the player sharing side, and even on the event and exhibition side, I, you know, I was... It was December, as you mentioned, and I was like, hey, guys, what about if I brought the Mumbai Cobras to Tokyo? Mm, and we yeah. played the Tokyo Giants in February. And they're like, February? You must be freaking crazy. That's only two months away. <clears throat> so they loved the idea, but they're like, all right, man, we, we need a little bit of time <laughs> to plan it out. But, um, yeah. you know, yeah. I like to move fast and try things. But I, I think That's there'll right. be, you know, I, I think there'll be a time where you see um, you know, some, uh, maybe even some exhibition games, um, or maybe even some competitive games. You know, one of the cool things, Randy, I saw is that we had a lot of different leagues reaching out to us, wanting to partner the Australian league, a lot of the, the, the Latin American and Caribbean, uh, league. So, um, you know, we're just at the beginning of what's possible for international baseball. And that's the exciting part. No, I, I definitely agree. Um, I, I myself actually saw the NC Dinos of the KBO League in Korea come out here to California a couple of years ago and play UC Irvine college base, uh, baseball team. Oh, so that was, I'll, I'll say, a very one-sided <laughs> game, <laughs> but, uh, you know, college kids against uh, semi-pro and pro team uh, players. Um, right. I saw Marcus Thames launch one into the darkness at that night. Uh, don't know where it landed, but it was definitely a home run. Uh, 
So partnering up with other inter- international t- uh, leagues and teams uh, and part, you know, ownership, uh, I think is definitely a great way to expand your own league. Agree. Um, so I know that we talked about the WBSC rankings for your national teams in South Asia and the Middle East. I just checked those, and I saw that um, Pakistan's men's baseball has risen a little bit. Are they yep. going to be doing some uh, tournaments and events in 2024 to try and get to the top 20? I see that they're they will. Winning, sitting at number 38. Yeah, they're 38 now, and, and they've been playing great. They've got some great young pitching talent. They've been recruiting uh, guys um, – it, at home in Pakistan, as well as people who have Pakistani, you know, origin and parents here in the U.S., which has been a great strategy for them. They performed well in Tokyo at the Asian Games a few months ago. And I expect them to be in two or three tournaments this year, including the West Asia Cup. You know, last year, West Asia Cup was around this time of year. This year, it's probably going to be later in the year. But um, they've got a great program. they got a great federation. And, um, you know, I, I see them cracking the top 20 in the near future. That would be fantastic. And that would put them in uh, seating for the World Baseball Classic, correct? That's right. That's right. Yeah, and in that's L- in 2025? Yeah, I mean, the World Baseball Classic. And also you got the Olympics in 2028 that's going to have baseball. Yes. And, you know, yes. that's even more time. So you, you know, you know, I would love to see a team – you know, in a country from from South Asia and from the Middle East in the Olympics for baseball. That's going to be a huge, huge moment for those nations. Very great, yeah. Um, and I also saw that India has moved up a little bit, but they're a little bit lower at 68 right now as of the end of uh, 2023. So Yeah, since, since we've been working with these federations, man, every single one of them has moved up in the rankings. Pakistan, India, Palestine, Afghanistan, Nepal – Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, um, all of them we have um, great relationships and partnerships with, and um, just really happy to see them continuing to develop. Great. Um, I honestly don't have any more questions for you. I don't know if there's anything else that you have to share with the baseball world that's interested in what you're doing. Well, man, I just appreciate you, Randy. Thanks for all, um, always supporting and watching what we're doing. Um, we got a lot of work to do. We we made history a couple months ago, but we we're back to back to the grind, back to work. Um, got a lot of work to do, and then hopefully we'll be sharing some more updates soon on franchises and also the next games we'll be playing uh, later on this year. Okay, and you did mention that the league. We'll be playing between November and December, if I recall. Yep. Yeah, most likely our full season will be in 2025. Okay. Um, but we'll have some some more games and a tournament. You know, we'll announce it. You know how we do it. We'll announce yeah. it in a good way. Um, but it'll definitely be in that November, December time period. All right, great. Well, thank you, Cash, uh, for coming on and taking this, uh, your time for – talking with me and being on between the chalk lines uh i appreciate it as always and hope to talk to you again sometime thanks man take care thanks man bye